Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I want to walk through a scenario where we can discuss and see the results of removing chart junk from a visualization. Now in front of us here we have two examples of what I would place on the left is a visual that has a lot going on in terms of features, visual clutter, all sorts of stuff, and then an optimized and improved version of it on the right. So this video will be a great way for us to kind of walk through piece by piece everything that is inside of a visual and what can be removed. I'm using the term chart junk, which comes from Edward Tuck from way back in the day, uh, 20, 30 years ago at least. And it's just the concept of anything that is on a visual or a chart that does not add value. So from the perspective of Power BI, let's see what applies to that theory. So we're going to go ahead, hop into Power BI and get started. So to discuss the concepts of chart junk, I have two line charts in front of us, one on the left, which obviously has way too many things going on for it and pretty much every feature turned on, and the one on the right over here, which is a simplified cleanup version, the appropriate amount of data labels, lines, colors. Now, what I want to do is walk through left to right and basically just take this visual and slowly dissect it, pull it back as far as the complexity that we have on it and talk about each thing that I would turn on or off and why. So I have down here a tab for report cleanup start, and let's just talk about some of the things that we can initially turn off. Now, as a concept, chart junk, again, is something that was defined by Edward Tuft back in the 70s, I believe, maybe even earlier than that. Um, so don't quote me on that. But it's a general concept of extra items, or in his case, ink, because things used to be printed in books. The fewest and least amount of ink on a page is possible to convey a visualization. Now, in this case, that can translate to like the white space, the fewest amount of data points, information, colors, everything that you can see that still gives meaning to the visual and lets you derive insights from it. So a big thing that I see some people using is page backgrounds or visual backgrounds. Now, it's something that has a lot of shapes in it. In this case, there is a cool, colorful graphic, but it interferes with the lines and it distracts you. So I prefer as much white space as possible. So I'm going to come over to the format painter for this. And let's just kind of change the formatting on this visual. So the plot area background, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that to start with. Now, it does make the lines disappear. And that's another conversation for the grid lines. So let me go ahead and put them to a light gray. And then we will talk about these as well. So now with the grid lines in place, it's another thing for you to think about. Grid lines should help you track things along the axis. So the x-axis right now is my date and that's not something I really need to be able to vertically track that much. I can see changes over time on the line, but I don't need to see sections of my dates put together. So this is the situation where let's go ahead and turn that off. We have our horizontal lines left. That is something that still could add value. It helps me to track to see when things are above or below a threshold, such as 80,000, 60,000, 40,000, and so forth. Now we can also, again, reduce the ink on the page. I don't need a solid line necessarily. What about if I wanted to make this softer, more subtle. I've already made it a light color, that helps, but changing it from solid to dashed. Fewer um, bits of color, it blends a little bit better into the background, but still lets you see those dividing lines. So it's now a softer and, in my opinion, a cleaner one. And a lot of this is art and science, so um, as I go through many of the examples that I am um, in this video, just be aware that there's no right or wrong with some of this stuff necessarily, but it's just tools to hopefully help give you some perspective on what you can configure yourself. So we got the grid lines taken care of. Another one that we can just turn off for a quick win is just getting rid of those markers. Now those can be turned off and it removes those little dots along the lines. I've never been a huge fan of markers that much, not unless I'm doing something like a bump chart or things along those uh, specific lines of the designs or styles of line charts. So usually something I just prefer to have off entirely. I don't really see a lot of added value coming from that, and it makes the line cleaner. Along the lines of lines, um, you will not notice it a lot, given that there are so many sharp turns in direction for the data, and the volatility is pretty high right now on it. So I do like the smooth line, though. It does round things just a bit better, and I prefer to avoid sharp edges, hence the reason we round a lot of the objects that you see on the page here. But it's one type of line that I prefer. Now, we have that taken care of. Thinking about also the zoom sliders, it's a yes or no question you'll have to ask yourself on whether or not you find value from people being able to zoom in on the x-axis. 
Would they find value from zooming in on the why? I would recommend not to turn things on just because they exist. Make sure that your users are going to use it because if they're not going to use this, we can free up space and have more room for our chart, make it less complicated. So I'm going to turn that off in this case. Also along those lines to clear up the edges of this visual, we have three labels. I have a label for the series label right here. And with one value, I don't really need this. So I can go ahead and turn off the series label that frees up space on the right. And I see this commonly done as a something that's omitted or missed, but the X and Y axis labels, do they really need to be there? In this case, see in January, March, we know that that is a date period that's on the X axis. So that can be turned off. And the Y axis, it said sales. Now, if you have anything at the top, that's going to indicate what the visual should be telling you. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off from my Y axis the information here. And also, let's make sure that this visual is appropriately titled. So this would be, uh, say, uh, sales by date is essentially what this visualization is. So sales by date. That's all that really needs to be titled in there. And that automatically now implies the X and Y axis. And people can interpret the information as appropriate just off of that. So we've continued to clean this up, reduce the amount of clutter, come into the data labels. Right now, I have the data labels turned on for every single point, as much as it can fill on the screen at least. Now, label density is a great way to be able to highlight certain bits of data along a continuous axis where the important highs and lows will be called out. So let's just drop this to like 50%. Maybe like 70%, a little bit more. Okay, that's a they're starting to overlap. So we can keep this at about 50. Now what we get is the peak callouts from uh, the either the really high values or the really low values as they're moving over in time. But again, decluttering it and I can always hover to get my other values. So we've reduced that amount. But notice that I still have some decimal points that just are showing zeros. We also want to ensure those are gone too. So now I'm going to come to data labels, I'm going to go to value, and I'm going to change this to zero. There we are. And now we have further cemented this to a reduction of information and started to clean this up. Now, the last couple of things that I'll actually get rid of here is one thing that I want to add to this, as you saw on this original chart, is I really actually like to use some type of a rolling average value when there's a lot of volatility or a lot of up and down in drastic changes day over day for this data. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to actually get rid of my trend line because I don't need that anymore. So get rid of the trend line here and get rid of my forecast. And I'm going to come to my line section. I'm going to go to colors. I'm going to make this a very, very light green. So let's put that something like this here. And now I'm going to open up the options to come over to find the rolling average. I'm going to add this here. There we are. Now the rolling average is being used in the visual. So that is still a dark blue, but also notice that there's data labels showing for both. That can be confusing to end users. So I do want to make sure that under my data labels, I'm going to turn off my rolling average labels and only have it show for my original data. Because even though the average is smoothed out, it still might be good to know that there was a high value on a particular day or a low value on one of these other ones. But this has now been drastically cleaned up. We have removed a lot of the unnecessary clutter and chart junk and ink from that terminology that I used earlier off of this page. But hopefully this is something that just coming back to seeing them side by side, you can see just how easy and quickly you can start adding unnecessary items to a visual. So each time you are adding or removing a feature, make sure that the end users who will be looking at this are going to be utilizing those features and that it's not just adding clutter and too much cognitive load, which is another term that I like. It just means that they're thinking too hard about looking at the visual. So simpler, the better. But overall, I'd love to hear some of the comments on what you think should or shouldn't be chart junk, anything that I did particularly that, uh, that you agree with, or maybe that I could have uh, done differently or that you personally like as a best practice for adding or removing certain items from a visual. Don't forget to drop them into the comment section down below. As always, check out some of my related content here in the upper left. And don't forget to like, comment, or subscribe to the channel. It will continue to help this channel grow and ensure that these videos keep getting made. And otherwise, I will see you in my next video.